Hi there. So let's talk about bocage. So first of all, bocage is only um, introduced by SSR. So um, bocage is a form of hexide. Usually they'll say something like all hedges and walls are bocage. In this case, it's a BFP map that has um, that has inherent bocage as opposed to their hedges over here. I'm a little colorblind, so it's hard for me to see it, but these would be hedges, this would be bocage. So um, let's talk about line of sight for a second. Well, first let's talk about mandatory wall advantage. So if you are in a hex with with bocage, and, and this applies to walls too, and hedges, um, you get uh, mandatory wall advantage. You do not even have to mark your counter because you just get the wall, as long as you're there first. If you are in a hex with a positive TEM, like a building or woods behind a, behind a hedgerow or a wall, then you have to mark whether they have the wall advantage or um, whether they're using the building TEM. Now, the thing about, the thing about bocage is um, if you do not have wall advantage, then only adjacent units can see you. So in this case, the American, if he's not marked wall advantage, he's considered to be in the building. The German would have mandatory wall advantage. You can mark it to remember. They can see each other. They cannot see each other because they're not adjacent and he's not marked wall advantage. If he is marked wall advantage, then they can see each other again. So the TEM for Bocage is a plus two. Now, let's talk a little bit more about line of sight. Bocage is a one level obstacle. So someone, as an example, this American is on level one. They can see into the hexes directly behind the Bocage. So they can see each other because the German has wall advantage. If um, the German were back here, they could not see each other. This American cannot see past the hexes adjacent to the Bocage. Now, if it were level two, the American could see into the hex with the Bocage, let's say here, but there is one blind hex behind that. So it's kind of, kind of, kind of tough to get used to, but you get used to it after a while. Well, they couldn't see over this building, but oh well, yeah, they could actually. So let's say they're over here, just to make it easier to see. So um, they can see the German. They can't see the German. They can see the German again. All right, but over here, the German will get the plus two. All right, now that's really important. The whole wall advantage thing. Oh, uh, light bocage now. I believe MMP only has regular bocage, but uh, some of the third-party products like uh, BFP and maybe Lone Canuck have something called light bocage. Now, light bocage is a half-level obstacle instead of a full-level obstacle, and um, it's a little bit easier to move through. Regular bocage is two movement factors plus cost of terrain for infantry, so that would cost two plus one, three to go into. This would cost two plus two, four to go into. Um, light bocage is one and a half plus cost of terrain. So this would cost two and a half to go into. So two and a half, four. Hey, we were able to do it without CXing. All right. So that's that's uh, the only differences I know of between light bocage and regular bocage is the movement factor cost and the height. So in this example, if this was light bocage, the American could fire at the German plus two. The American could fire at the German, zero, no TEM at all, because it's only half level obstacle and he's on level two. Even on level one, he'd be able to pull that off. Okay, so now let's go through the phases. Now this is where um, the bocage really gets interesting. Rally phase, we have a broken unit here, we have a concealed leader. During the rally phase, all rally phase activities, you are considered out of line of sight to the enemy if all line of sight is traced through Bocage hex size. So what does that mean? That means that the leader can rally the squad without losing concealment. That's really important. What else does it mean? The squad, let's say they were like this, can deploy 
without losing concealment. And that's really big too. Now, going to prep fire. This is the big one. This is this is the neatest trick of all. Nowhere else in squad leader can you do this. Here we have to state whether the German has wall advantage or not. Assuming the German does, and it is the German prep fire phase, the German can fire on the American. Oh, you're going to love this one. German can fire on the American, loses concealment, of course, has wall advantage. Let's say the American survives, just, just to make it that much worse, more insulting to the American. The American does not break. During the movement phase, even though the German is marked prep fire, can voluntarily drop wall advantage, because that's one of the times you can drop wall advantage. Now the German is considered in the building and not adjacent to the hedgerow. I mean, he's adjacent to the hedgerow, but you know what I mean. The American and the German can no longer see each other. Well, guess what? Defensive fire phase, the American cannot shoot at the German, cannot return fire. So the German gets a free shot, gets to skulk in his own hex. Wait, wait, it gets worse. During the advance phase, German gets to claim wall advantage again. And if you think that's all... Germans are considered out of line of sight to any line of sight trace through a Bocage hex side for concealment gain purposes. Now the Americans have the choice during their turn. They can prep fire on the German with a 2 plus 2. They can move next to them in which the German gets to attack them with a 10 down 2. Or if they assault move, a 10 down 1. Well, no, there's a minus 1 leader. But you get the point. So defensively, it is as nasty as it gets, what you can do with this stuff. Um, line of sight, I don't know if I mentioned. You cannot see down the hex spine like you can with a hedge, unless it's light bocage. Light bocage you can. That's another difference between light and, and uh, normal bocage. So um, now let's go to vehicles. Vehicles are always considered hull down. So... That's a great benefit to anybody who has wall advantage behind it. Only get hit in the turret. Less than 50% of the hits will actually um, hit you. To move across Bocage is half your movement points. So this guy will be 5.5 plus cost of terrain, 6.5. And, and he's across. Now he does have to roll a bog check. But other than the ground conditions and the, um, and the ground pressure of the vehicle, there's no modifier, so assuming this is uh, normal ground conditions and he has normal ground pressure, he will bog on an 11 or 12. I think that's a that's a 1 in 12. 1 in 12 times he'll bog, so that's not bad at all. That's very reasonable to get through. If there's a breach, they can get through with a quarter of their movement points and no bog check, so that makes it even easier. Breaches, you can breach Wakaj with... with um, with dozers, bulldozers, and Cullen devices, and by SSR. So that's all the, about all there is to it. There's a lot more little nuances and tricks and stuff that you'll have to learn on your own, but um, I think that covers the basics of the bocage. Now there are so many scenarios. I, I mean, some of my absolute favorites that take place during the bocage, in the bocage. So um, now you can now you can enjoy those too. Thanks for watching. Hey there, I'm Derek from Ritter's War Table, and today we're going to talk about Bocage 101. So we're not going to get too deep into it, maybe a 10 minute video, and uh, hopefully you'll get the basics of it. It's really not hard to play, so much fun, so many great, great scenarios take place in Normandy in the Bocage, and, um, and I hope you enjoy it. Thanks so much for watching. To help you along with um, your newfound love for Bocage. I have a few items that I'm going to place on sale that are Bocage heavy or Bocage exclusive. So let's take a look at what we have. They're in shrink wrap, so I'm not going to open them, but let's see what we got. Okay, from Lone Canuck Publishing, we have Battle of the Hedgerows, and uh, that would be, I believe, there's six scenarios that take place in the hedgerows, and um, a lot of a lot of tanks, a lot of infantry, a lot of fun, very cheap. I don't remember what this is, but it's 12 or 14 dollars, something like that, for six great hedgerow scenarios. 
from the same company. This is probably my favorite campaign game of all time. I know you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna hate me and because it's not Red Barricades, but my brain can't process anything as big as Red Barricades. I have to play small things. The nice thing about this is it comes with a map. I think it's twenty seven dollars. Like I said, everything's gonna be on sale. Um, it comes with a beautiful map, um, three or four scenarios, and a campaign game. And the nice thing about it is it's um, it's platoon size. I mean, it's tiny. You're buying three, six, nine, nine squads, maybe a tank or two. It's very, very small, very manageable, just big enough for my brain to process anything bigger, and I can't do it. So I absolutely adore this campaign game. Um, one of the few ones that I've actually been able to play to completion. Okay, then we have two from from uh, Bounding Fire Productions. Now these are quality wise, they are absolutely second to none. The first one was Beyond the Beachhead, and this was this was originally re released from Heat of Battle, and um, Chaz Smith re-released it when he started Bounding Fire Productions, and um, I think he added a bunch of scenarios with it. It comes with maps, it comes with a ton of scenarios. It is it is second to none. There is no greater product um, that I would buy to start my collection. Um, comes with three giant overlays, comes with four map boards, and uh, 16 scenarios all taking place um, in the Normandy sector. I think they all they all include Bocage. And then there's Operation Cobra. Now Operation Co Cobra is uh, is less expensive. It does not come with any maps. It comes with a big overlay, but it comes with a book. Now, I have my book handy. Let me go grab it. Here's my book that comes with it, and this is 58 pages of notes on Bocage, how to play Bocage, the rules of Bocage, beautiful color, beautiful components. Um, it just goes on and on and on, the examples and the nuances. And then it goes on to discuss the scenarios from Beyond the Beachhead, give you a good idea about them. And then it tells you, here's an order of battle for the Normandy campaign. What a wonderful, wonderful product. Hours of reading, in my case, years of reading because I'm such a slow reader. Talking all about Operation Cobra. All right, there's, oh, it comes with counters too comes with uh, beautiful fighter bomber counters, new tanks with uh, the American tanks, but with uh, Cullen devices and uh, some flame throwing Shermans and just wonderful product. So anyway, they're all going to be on sale if you want to try to dive into some, some fighting in the hedgerows of Normandy. Thanks so much for watching.